I've gotten various questions about freelance visa. What is actually freelance visa? So today, on today's video, I'm going to be answering all your questions. I'm tired of replying emails and messages about freelance visa. So that's why I decided to compile, answer all your questions in one video, okay? I'm going to be discussing with you all what is freelance visa, um, the advantages, the disadvantages, and the likely punishment for having a freelance visa. And I'm going to be telling you guys if this freelance visa, if it's legal or illegal, okay? And if this sounds interesting to you, kindly keep on watching to the end so that you don't miss out on any points. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Choma and you're welcome back. If you're just seeing this beautiful face for the first time, I don't know if you can see my face because of this cap. Man is hot. But if you're just seeing this beautiful face for the first time, don't make it your last on this channel. I share Qatar related content, lifestyle, and everything you need to know about Qatar. And to all my returning subscribers, thank you all for stopping by. Thank you all for clicking on this video. I just finished from work and I decided to shoot this video for you all because my weekend is busy and my next week is fully busy but I really wanted to do this video. Let me get to where I can sit down and make this video. In case you don't know, Qatar follows a sponsored based system. That means any foreign worker in Qatar should be under a sponsorship either by directly under a Qatari or under a business entity but you must all have a sponsor every foreigner you see working here as a sponsor okay and um there come the question what is freelance visa freelance visa it's a visa you buy to come to qatar on your own there is no company bringing you to qatar okay you are the one buying your visa no company is like giving you an offer letter for you to come over to qatar to work you, you decided to buy your visa and um, you decided to come to Qatar on your own to search for jobs and um, freelance visa it's illegal unlike in Dubai Dubai first introduced this freelance visa in Dubai it is legal but in Qatar there is no law stating that freelance visa is legal and you are not allowed to buy visa from any company it is not allowed but people actually do it and when they get here um, yeah, some people have actually made it through this freelance visa, okay? But it's better for you to know the advantages and disadvantages before you take any step. So that when you get here, you're not going to be shocked. At least you will know what to actually prepare your mind for so that you don't get um, stuck on the way. So today I'm going to be discussing with you all the advantages and the disadvantages of a freelance visa. But I will go first with the advantages because the advantages is little, why the disadvantages is more. So it's better for you to hear the advantages first and then you can decide which one you actually want to go for. One of the advantages of a freelance visa is you have the ability to change jobs, okay? Maybe for example, you are working for company A and you are not comfortable with that company. Within six months, you can decide to like change the job to another job okay like maybe for example maybe a company brings um someone to qatar that person has to finish his or her contract you sign a two years contract you have to finish that two years contract with that company but if you're under a freelance visa you can decide to change the job the way you like okay you are not like um you're not tied down to a particular company and the next um advantages is um there is room for huge salary okay because at this point you have the power to negotiate maybe you are on your own and yeah you can negotiate but someone that a company is bringing over to qatar might not really have that strong negotiating power but you like you are with a freelance visa you came on your own you can easily walk up to that com to that company and maybe the price the salary they're according for you it's not okay to your standard you can decide to reject it and 
go for a bigger salary so you have there is opportunity for huge salaries and um the third point i have here is professional status okay there's what we call status in qatar and status at times it, de it determines if you can bring your family over to qatar there are some status like maybe for example you're a driver you're a laborer you might not be able to bring your family over to qatar but someone that is a manager in his id can be able to bring his or her family to qatar like a supervisor um different there are some good um status professional status that people are really looking for to have so that they can bring their family over to qatar but you that you come under a company's um under a company's um, visa, a company's a company sponsor you directly for you to come work for them. Um, it's most of, most most times is the role that they employ you for that is going to be on your ID. For example, maybe they're employing you as a waitress. That is the same thing that is going to be on your ID, and this can easily limit you to getting a a good um maybe for you to like bring your family it can easily limit you so that's why some people prefer to go for the freelance visa rather than a company bringing them directly from their country over to qatar okay and um these are the advantages i know just three advantages these are the ones i know if you know like if you have if you have been in qatar with a freelance visa and there are other advantages that you, you are willing to share with us Please put it in the comment section one or two people can as well learn from you now there comes that what is the disadvantages of having a freelance visa the number one disadvantage of having a freelance visa is the renewal of id for example a company is bringing someone directly to work for them the company is going to be in charge of the renewal of their id okay there's what we call qid qid means you are, you are a resident of qatar you are eligible to work in Qatar. So if you are if you have a freelance visa, okay, you are on your own, you have to be renewing your ID. And that means you have to be paying your sponsor like three thousand Qatar reals. Some people are collecting four thousand Qatar reals every every year. This is a yearly thing. Yes, you might say that oh that um three thousand Qatar reals for a year is not much. Um at times if you're out of job how are you going to pay that money and some of these sponsors they are not even smiling some of them if you're not ready to like pay that um for your id some of them will just cancel you and you'll be deported out of the country so rene renewal of id it's on you not on your sponsor the second one is um your flight tickets and accommodation the company um if you're under a freelance visa you are going to be the one in charge of your accommodation and they won't even be paying paying for your flight tickets because they did not employ you like directly they did not bring you into their company or like someone that's only employed directly that person is going to like have uh, opportunities for flight tickets and accommodation but you that you're on you are under a freelance visa you you'll be in charge of everything yourself the third point here is getting a job can be very, very, it can be a struggle. It can be very, very hard. Most companies, they give priority to people that they brought from their, how would I put it? Most companies prefer to bring people to work for them directly. So now you are going to uh, a company, maybe or just got to Qatar and you are trying to like get a job under that freelance visa it can be really tough it can be really hard so that's why you might need to like think twice before going for that type of of um visa getting a job might take time but when you get the job yes you'll be settled there are some people that um they've really done well for themselves with this freelance visa some people will tell you literally that they cannot work for a company directly they just prefer their freelance visa so don't get me wrong some people they are really really doing well i'll continue to say it's grace it differs okay but just have it at the back of your mind getting a job can be a struggle so when you are coming over to qatar just hold enough money that is going to like sustain you that is going to like um for you to like pay rent for you to feed just hold enough money at least give yourself like the timing of six months to look for job give yourself that time it might not be up to that time for you to like get a job but just give yourself a grace of six months. Bring money in that is going to like sustain you for 
six months okay next one is illegal employment yes illegal employment at times you um under a freelance visa you might be working for a company without you even knowing that you are working illegally for that company let me break it down to you if you're um uh if you are under a freelance visa and you want to work for another company there's something that we call here in Qatar. we call it noc it is non objection letter non objection letter that means you are permitted to work in another company that is not your company and please note on your qid the name of your company is always written on your qid maybe for example police came over to where you are working and they are searching everybody's qid once they search your qid and uh, they know if you're under that company or not and if you're not under that company they're going to ask your employer um does he have any any evidence that he is supposed to work here okay and that is the noc because the noc it needs to go to the ministry of labor they're going to attest to that and um, you'll be able to work in that company okay and some people they don't they don't know about these things and they don't submit the noc okay and this noc also your 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 sponsor is also going to charge you for it like for him to make the noc for you just know that if you're under a freelance visa anything you want to do under your company is with money your id you have to pay for your id noc you have to pay for noc maybe you want to collect one letter you have to pay for it so um just know that please if you are coming with a freelance visa don't work for any company illegally you might be you might have been doing it and you don't get caught maybe the day that you're going to get caught it's not going to be good so always work with your noc and at times this noc is six months three months and standard companies usually ask for noc that please you need to provide them with noc so working at times one of the disadvantage at times you work illegally you are illegally employed and you don't even know about it the next one is absconding sponsor some people oh my god they can be very very wicked okay um i said it in my previous video that some people they will get to qatar and they'll start looking for their sponsor they will not see their sponsor why even some you might even see your sponsor you might renew your id and uh, maybe the following year for you to like renew your id your sponsor is nowhere to be found so people they will close down their company their previous company and open a new one then how do you want to see your sponsor so at times sponsor at times collect money from people to renew their id and they move they relocate to another country so that's why um if you are going to be coming on a freelance visa Please prepare your mind to face some of these things. But I hope and I pray that you don't face it. But this is just to like tell you the reality of what is happening currently in Qatar. The last disadvantage I'm going to be talking about is more money to change sponsor. Okay. I told you that anything that you want to do, you have to keep on paying. You have to pay. You want to collect ID. If you want to renew your ID, you have to pay. You want to collect NOC, you have to pay. You want to um, change your sponsor. Maybe you want to change to another company, you have to pay your sponsor. So just know that anything you are, when you are, when you are coming, and WPS, there's what's called WPS, that a company needs to be um, doing every month. They need to be paying some amount of money to the bank every month. Your sponsor is going to collect that from you. So please just have it at the back of your mind. If you are coming to Qatar with a freelance visa, just know that um, you are going to be spending money, okay? You are going to be spending, you are going to be paying, especially when you don't have a good sponsor. It's going to be a struggle, a real struggle. And there comes the punishment. Mount ask that, what is the punishment for this um, freelance visa? Okay, maybe for example, you are working in a company. I, I made this example before. You are working in a company and uh, in another company, which is not your company. And maybe police um, came there and they search your um, ID. It's a different company and you are in a different company. The next thing that they're going to ask is, where is your NOC? And if you cannot provide the NOC, your sponsor, the employer, and you, you are going to be in big trouble. You're going to pay fine. And at times, you as the you, are, you that you are, have the visa, at times you are going to be deported out of the country. Okay. So just have this at the back of your mind. Anywhere you want to go and work at all, 
always have your NOC. Always submit a written letter that is attested by the by the Ministry of Labor that you are permitted to work in that company. And this is all I can say about um, freelance visa. I hope you learned one or two things. I tried to like um, put everything in one video so that you know the advantages, disadvantages, the punishment, and you know why freelance visa is called freelance visa. It's because of you are buying that visa with your money, okay? And um, a company did not give you maybe any offer letter that you got a job with them. You decided to buy that visa and this visa at times it can be really really expensive depending on the country you are coming from and i hope you all enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video please give this video a thumbs up and share with your family and friends so they can also learn from this video that i made and they don't fall a victim and they will know what to expect when coming to qatar if you are new to this channel please subscribe to this channel come join this wonderful family it's all love here and to all my returning subscribers thank you all for stopping by thank you all for clicking on this video see you all in the next one but always remember to love yourself bye